Hello and welcome to Jackson's Job. Today we're going to make this really nice 6 inch cheesecake and you don't need a spring form pan. The ingredients aren't even difficult and if you use yogurt you can save a ton of calories and it still tastes delicious. You will need to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius. You'll need a 6 inch cake pan that's 15 centimeters and you want it at least 2 inches tall, about 5 centimeters. Then you need to cut out a 6 inch circle of parchment paper that's 15 centimeters, 2 strips, 1 by 12 inches, 2.5 centimeters by 30 centimeters, and then 1 strip that is 3.5 inches by 19 inches, that's 9 by 48 centimeters. To adhere the parchment paper to the pan, you're going to need some melted butter. I'm using 2 tablespoons of melted butter, that's 28 grams, that's because I'm also going to use it for the graham cracker crust and you want to coat the pan really generously all on the inside. A pastry brush helps with this process. If you don't have one, a paper towel or even your fingers will do nicely. Once you have your pan coated, then you're going to dip the brush in again and you're going to coat one side of your parchment paper. Now on the two skinny strips, skip about one inch on both ends because that's going to stick up and you don't want butter on that. And you don't need to put a lot of butter on there. This just helps the cake release later on and helps the paper stick to the pan. We're going to take one of the small strips and we're going to put it across the pan like this and then up the sides. You want about an inch or about 2.5 centimeters hanging on each end. These will give you tabs to help you release the cheesecake from the pan after it has cooled. And then you put the next one on in a cross pattern. And if you wanted to, you could do an extra strip just to have some added insurance, but I've always found two is plenty. Once you have those in place, we're going to put on the collar, and this goes on the sides of the pan. And the reason why it's so tall is sometimes if you put too much air in your cheesecake, it will souffle up, and you don't want it spilling out into your oven or in your water bath. Now, if you do have a spring form pan and you're using that, you need to use two layers of aluminum foil on the outside, and that will ensure no water will get into the pan as it bakes. Put the circle buttered side down and then press everything into place. Once you have it into place, you're going to set this aside. I have five graham crackers in here. It'll end up being a half a cup of graham cracker crumbs. That's 76 grams. And I also have in one tablespoon of sugar. That's 12.5 grams. And you're just going to bash these with a rolling pin. And if you wanted to, you could use a blender for this step. It should be a fine crumb like this in the end. Grab that melted butter from earlier, whatever you have left over, and you're going to mix this with your graham cracker crumbs. You can use the bag that you're mixing up the graham cracker crumbs, or you can pour this into a bowl and just mix it by hand. I will warn you, when you use a bag, you tend to get holes all through it. You will get some butter leaking onto your counter. Keep that in mind. Pour this into the bottom of your prepared pan, and then you want to press it down firmly. Take your time here. Really press it into shape because it will help you get the cake out later. Bake it 5 to 10 minutes or until it's golden brown. You'll start to smell it when it's done. Then you want to put it on a wire rack and let it cool completely. In a large bowl, we have two packages of cream cheese that has been softened. That's 454 grams or 16 ounces. You want to beat it until it's nice and smooth like this. On occasion, if you need to, scrape down the sides. Next, you're going to add in one quarter cup of plain yogurt or sour cream. That's 60 grams. I like to use plain yogurt because you save some calories, but sour cream will give you a really rich and decadent flavor if you're not minding your calories, especially your saturated fats. It should look really smooth and creamy like this. Add in some salt, just one eighth of a teaspoon. That's 0.625 grams. And we're going to add in some vanilla, one teaspoon, five milliliters. Don't go overboard with your vanilla here. You want that cheesecake flavor. You want that tang. If you put too much vanilla in it, it kind of mellows out the flavor. So just keep that in mind. You can also use lemon zest instead of the vanilla, and that will give you a really nice zippy flavor. Add in some sugar. I'm going to put in two thirds of a cup or 133 grams. Now, if you don't like a very sweet cheesecake, Go down to a half a cup or 100 grams, and if you want it to be really sweet, go up to three quarters of a cup or 150 grams. What I suggest doing is putting in a half of a cup and then mixing it up and giving it a quick taste. If it's not sweet enough for you at this point, go ahead and add in some more sugar. Then after you have gotten the taste you like, 
you're going to add in your eggs. You need two large eggs, 100 grams, and you want to mix the eggs up briefly before you put it in the batter. You don't want a lot of air in a cheesecake. You're going to blend this on a very low speed just until those eggs are combined. Don't over mix it. It'll be quite a thin batter in the end. Now we're going to get our completely cooled pan from earlier and make sure it's cooled before you touch it like I just did. And then pour it in your batter. Scrape out all the excess and then you want to tap out any bubbles. And you're going to put hot water in a 9 inch cake pan 23 centimeters until the water reaches about halfway up the side of the pan. You're going to bake this 60 to 75 minutes or until the center reaches 160 degrees Fahrenheit, 71 degrees Celsius, and the center just wobbles just a little bit like you're seeing here. Then you're going to turn off your oven, keep it ajar if possible, and let it sit there for 45 minutes. This will help prevent cracks or sunken cheesecake. And then remove it and let it finish cooling completely before you store it. You want to loosely cover this with some saran wrap or plastic wrap and chill it a minimum of four hours. If you can chill it overnight, it'll be even better. The next day, you're gonna bring it out, and then we're gonna use those tabs to start releasing the cheesecake. Pull slightly on each one of them, gently but firmly at the same time, and you'll start to feel the suction release. Once the suction releases, just alternate tabs and pull it up gently. You don't want to try to pull it up too quickly or you will crack the cheesecake. This has taken me a little bit of time and I'm going to keep it in here so you can see what I'm doing. But once it comes out, it should lift out really nicely. If you have someone to help you with this step, it will come out a lot faster. Then you're just going to remove the parchment paper that we had on the cheesecake. And if you press down firmly on that graham cracker crumb, you should lift that bottom right off. And look at this. Isn't this absolutely lovely? I wish you could see how silky smooth this cheesecake is. It's absolutely wonderful. What do you like to put on the top of your cheesecake? Do you like it plain? Do you like strawberries, raspberries, blueberries? I'm curious. Let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. Thank you for watching and as always, happy baking!